What I also found interesting was this need of your students to use the term you use to Gucci, and I've attempted to translate it as getting things off your chest. And it was important for students to find someone they could talk to and not really complain, but just get things off their chest, frustrations or negative experiences. How much did, was that evident in your study as an important factor? Uh, I mean, there was a lot of things, especially the, uh, when the experiences that students were communicating about were effortful. And if you, again, the listener listened to the episode four, they will realize that effortful experience is often challenging, which gives sometimes uh, stress and frustration, anxiety, you know, potential fallbacks and, you know, some of the uh, issues, um, interpersonal issues too, um, sometimes as well. So there's a negativity to it. And the negativity is part of the Pursuit of Ikigai, uh, according to my theory. Now, it's not a good idea to keep that probably in your mind. And it's really like a coping literature and social support suggests it's important to somehow communicate, you know, vent like that, you know, um, sort of thing. Now, Gucci, I originally, in my mind, I was thinking, okay, Gucci in Japanese side of me, I understand as Gucci, but the other side was translating it in, into English as a complaint. And, but then I realized that like you, I think Nick, you did a really good job translating that Gucci isn't in a tr in an English sense. It's not really complaining because to me, complaining in English, sometimes like a complaining to a company after you purchase their product or something, you want something, you know, you want to make a change. You want to do something really address the situation. Hopefully, although it may not happen, but that student's Gucci was not a, you know, there was no intention of actually addressing the situation. They knew that their distress and the frustration was part of the deal of that effort for experiences. And it could be actually a good thing and down the road, they knew that, but they needed to get that stress and frustration and anxiety off their chest for that time being. And the safe space, really the safe space, you know, interpersonal space that they can do that, where they can do it, was those ibasho where they can, you know, uh, be true to each other, real to each other. Yeah, I liked how you identified it as, it's almost like a coping mechanism. And I guess if we don't do it, if we don't get something off our chest and we have repeated bad experiences, one day we just might blow up at the wrong person. And I do know the word um, waruguchi in Japanese, which mm -hmm. I guess means to speak badly of someone behind yes. their back. Mm -hmm. So just reading guchi made me realize, oh, okay, guchi is just getting something off your chest. Whereas waruguchi is when you're complaining about someone over and over again and Mm -hmm. After a while, it's not helpful. You know, you've got to, there's right. got to be a point where you stop. I mean, probably you shouldn't. I think Waraguchi is always used in a negative context. I think so. Waraguchi has very vicious, malicious uh, intention behind it uh, from my perspective, from my understanding of Japanese. Now, the Gucci is, now that you mentioned it, I think, I mean, Gucci can involve the other people. And then sometimes the focus was on that other person sometimes. But really, the, the core of the Gucci is that experience, right? The experience is not going as, as you want, basically, in the direction that you want. There's bumps and the challenges as you go. And uh, really, as long as, as long as you can make that complaining, quote-unquote complaining or Gucci, about that experience, I think it tends to be more uh, constructive in a way that it's not, basically, you're not personalizing, you know, you're not attacking anybody in particular but it's that, you know, things are not going well, which is a part of the life and which is part of Ikigai as well.